My name is Zach Phillips, and um, I'm the uh, owner and operator of a company called The Kitchen. And it's kind of funny, like I'm talking about entrepreneurship, um, because my company is technically only six months old. Um, I have been a freelancer for three years before that, or two, maybe two years, two to three years before that. So, in some ways, my company is older than six months. But the company that I currently have, that has like an entity and has a place of business and has a phone number, that's only six months old. The good news is things have gone really well so far, and I think I can kind of tell you a little bit about why I think that is or what where I'm coming coming from. So I set some kind of, uh, I, I, think, I think I'm going to try to be as specific as possible with you guys. I would appreciate, I mean, this is obviously a big group, but you can just keep this between us. I'm, I'm telling you because you're here and you're actually interested in like the nitty gritty of things. I originally said, sort of off the top of my head, I know nothing about business, I know nothing about money, I, I barely know how to use Microsoft Excel, although I'll get into I know how to use a lot of other software and I'm really into software, but I've never been a numbers guy. I sort of guessed, well, if I do 120,000 in revenue this year, uh, you know, that's about 10,000 a month in revenue, not in profit, then I can then I can be okay and the business can like go on. And we we have in 6 months we have tripled that um, at the kitchen. Um, and that's been like amazing. And and the main thing was getting a few big clients. Obviously when you're dealing with client services, it's all about getting, you know, uh, one or two big customers that give you a lot of repeat business. The, the way that I initially found the business was um, that I, I thought, I looked around at other video companies in Delaware, and I didn't think that any of them were trying. I don't want to say that they're, that, they're, that they're bad or anything like that, or that I'm not trying to be like a, you know, a, a mean person but it just looks like nobody was actually trying to do work of a high level. And that's kind of what I want to do. I want to do work that's worthy of bigger markets like New York and LA and these type of places. And what I noticed was whenever something needed to be done uh, really nicely, people were going out of town. They would go to New York, they would go to Philly, they would go to uh, some other companies. And I thought, well, maybe you know, people like to deal locally. They like to deal with people that they know, especially here in Delaware. People like to kind of keep it all in the family. And I thought maybe I could, I could intercept some of that business going out of town. And thus far, that's exactly what's happened. Um, there's a couple large agencies that do stuff for the state. Uh, one of them uh, did a was was working on this new health care law. I don't know if any of you have been on the website. Uh, it's a sad, sad thing, but. The commercials that we made to try to get people to go to the website, I think, turned out pretty well. And this is going to be the only work I show you is just these these commercials because I want you to have like some proof that like I'm actually doing what I'm saying that I'm doing. This was um, these are two commercials, or I should say, two commercial campaigns that we did for Choose Health Delaware, which is basically Delaware's marketing for the new healthcare law. Accidents happen. So do huge medical bills. 
Find out how to get health insurance coverage by visiting choosehealthde.com. So obviously this was, the, the, that was a whole bunch of little scenes that were turned into several 30 second commercials that are showing between October and then into the next year. And we're doing, we're in the process of doing another campaign for them. This other one is just two, this one's shorter. It's just two 30 second spots with these little kids. And this one, that one was designed to appeal to the younger audience. And by the way, when they came to us looking for concepts, et cetera, they had all this focus group data and that we had to use and the big, you know, books full of stuff to read before we came up with these concepts. And we had to have everything done and live for TV in two weeks from the moment that they didn't have any concepts. And I had never been on a job that big, which is something I want to touch on. So let me explain that. Here's the other one. This is for the uh, older audience. Just a few minutes. Can I ask you about the new health insurance law? Sure. Ask away. How much will it cost for coverage? It depends. There are multiple plans to choose from. Is there someone there to guide you? Yep. Locally trained marketplace guide to walk you through the enrollment process so you can pick an affordable plan that meets your needs. What about pre-existing conditions? Covered. Questions about the new health insurance law? Find answers at choosehealthde.com. When does this new health insurance law kick in? January 1st. Am I guaranteed coverage if I have a pre-existing condition? Yes. Will it be free? No. Can someone guide me through the process for free? Yes. Is it just for people or pets too? Only people. If I use twice the amount of soap, will I stay clean twice as long? I'm asking for a friend. Questions about the new health insurance law? Find answers at choosehealthde.com. So, those two campaigns basically normally would have gone out to a company in Philly uh, that charges a lot more money, that has a lot more experience and a lot better portfolio and all that type of stuff. Um, and honestly, the, the way that I got that job was I invited some guys from an agency to my place for lunch and I met them and I talked to them. And when they were in a jam later on, uh, when they thought that their budget was too low to do something in time, they called me up. And by the way, the budget was tremendously higher than anything I've ever come across in work. And they said, can you do this for us? And we came through and got these done in two weeks for them, just in time for the thing. And now we're doing six more campaigns for them all through the state. Um, and basically, other parts of that agency and other parts of the state budget are opening up to us as, as, as work. So it's a really, that's, that's the biggest part of the story. But I want to go back a little bit because I know when you talk about entrepreneurship, most of us, including myself, have like ideas for these big kind of paradigm changing things. You know, like I want to make the next Facebook or the next you know, thing that hasn't even been thought of yet, but that everyone's going to use for like six hours a day. Um, or they're going to, you know, I'm going to control everyone's money. You know, all everyone's money will filter through me and I will take a cut, you know. Um, I, I have some big ideas. I have some big goals for my company. I'm not looking to be in client services forever. I mean, I want to make films someday. That's really my kind of personal goal. But I believe that it's a good thing to use kind of established business model to fund that if it's there. If there's one there, like use it. And so for me, it's client services. Um, can I do work for clients? Will doing work for clients help me get towards my goal? In a lot of ways, yes, because I'm working with my medium. I'm learning more and more about film production and I'm collecting equipment and um, I'm just sharpening my skills while getting paid to do it. And so that's really what this, what this is for me. Um, when I started the company, my plan was to, when I started the kitchen, my plan was to do both film and web development. I'm also a, a programmer and kind of a Unix nerd going back a little ways. Um, I used to be a Rails developer and things like this. And... Uh, one thing I definitely wanted to make sure I said during this talk is that if you're, if you're looking to do something uh, business-wise, just make sure that you think through what your job is going to be at that thing. 
that you're trying to build, right? Because, for example, I've got a big startup that I want to make, and I've been, and I actually have been working on it for years, but it's nowhere near done. It's a big idea, and I, I've built like three different versions of it in three different languages, and I've, I've got different ways that it can do things, but it needs so much work, and when it's done, I'm going to have to run it. And the, the question that like, I had to kind of answer honestly for myself, and I'm not ready to give this up because it's a big deal to me, like it's something I want to do, but like, do I want to, once I'm done building this thing, which is sort of fun for me and I want it to exist and it means something to me, now I've got Jimmy Perkins from Cincinnati, Ohio calling me up because his butt, he pressed the button and it didn't do something. And somebody's got to do that. Now I'm supporting software. Right now, I'm, my job is no longer to build this cool app. My job is to support it. And that's what happened to me with web development. I, I like web development. I like designing. I like implementing code. I do not like that just before this talk, a client from four years ago that I'm, not, I'm trying not to do any web development anymore. I'm completely focused on film stuff. A client from four years ago just emailed me just before this talk to say, can you update our SSL certificate for our website? And that's not the job I want. And that was my job as a web developer. And I had to learn that by doing it a lot, you know? But I'm just, I just want to like put that out there because I think there are a lot of things that we think we want to do and then we find out that we don't want to do, which is not to discourage you from doing it because I think if you do it, that's how you, you learn anyway. But I'm just, um, I've been guilty, and some of you maybe, if you're in an entrepreneurship club, may be guilty of like wanting to do 700 things. Point, like your time is limited, and you have to kind of choose. And so that's why I decided to make the kitchen a film-only business. And that's and the great thing about film is I finish something, and I I walk over and I hand it to someone, and it's done. I mean, I you know I, I figuratively hand it to someone, and I'm done with it. And they've paid me, and it's an honest transaction. We're done. They're not gonna call me up, you know, six months later because, hey, can we make the headline blue, you know, on that thing, um, that type, of, that type of thing. So, uh, that was the first thing I wanted to mention. Um, I think that for me, and I think I think I'm gonna get into questions really soon because I don't want to like talk the whole time, but. I think for me, the, the number one thing I've learned is that it's way more work than I thought it would be to run my own business. Um, you know, you have this kind of maybe a little bit romanticized picture of having your own business and setting your own hours and staying up late at night and coding away and then the next day you can sleep in and it doesn't matter because you've got your own business. Um, I, my like health has suffered because of how much I work. Um, I, I've, for the last three years, meaning like the web development phase up until, up until now, I've maybe taken two vacations. One was my honeymoon like two weeks ago. Um, and the rest of the time I was working um, just all the time. Just, that's all I can, and it's not like, you know, even, okay, so I have some time off or something or I, I, I don't do anything for enjoyment. But even while I'm doing something for, for, for enjoyment, I'm thinking about my business. Um, and I'm thinking about, and, and even if I'm reading a book, like if I go to sit down and read and enjoy a book, I think, will this book help me with my business? Is this the book I should be reading? You know, and that's, and that's something, that's just me, that's maybe just my personality, but it is something to, to, to think about is if you have that picture of what this is, I think the only thing that can kind of inspire you to guide you through what it really takes to like build something, you have to really love the thing. You have to love the thing you're doing to some extent, I think. Now some people may be able to just do it for money and say I'm gonna make a bunch of money and so I'll build this thing until it's generating money for me. But to me money has never been enough of a motivator to work as hard as I've had to work to get things where they where they are, um, so that is one thing, um, and maybe you know I have a tendency to have long-winded answers to questions. So maybe right now I'll just open it up to questions. 
and we can start talking and I may find something that I that runs me down a, a tangent again. So like I said, I'm someone who has big goals and I have like in various stages of not finishedness all kinds of projects. Startups, uh, you know, web applications. I've got um, a briefcase that I've designed that I want to sell, right? I've got all these things and I just wanted a business name and brand that I thought was cool that didn't say I did one thing so that I'd have to abandon it later uh, when I decided I hated film now and I don't want to do it anymore. Um, so that's really it. I, I just thought I, I, I had tried to come up with a catchy, cool name and I had had all these things before the word kitchen and then somebody was like, how about just the kitchen? And I looked it up and it was available and, you know, that, I just, that was it. You know, I bought it and my friend made a really cool logo for it. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the logo. It's like my favorite thing about the business is the logo. But anyway, so um, uh, so that's it, yeah. I don't know if that, yeah, I, I, you can do a lot of cute things with it. Like my title is dishwasher slash director. Yeah, that's cute. Um, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, I also, I think this is a good opportunity to talk about two other things, which is one of my, the things that I've, that I did that really helped me were to lie. <laughs> um, and by lie, I mean tell people I could do something that I couldn't yet do. Um, and that forced me to learn how to do that in the time that I had in order to get that job done. Because I, I find it, I don't know about you guys, I find it so difficult to learn from like books and tutorials. Like I need to be actually making something and it has to actually have stakes involved in order for me to really do it, especially if it's something difficult. Like creating a web application with Rails when you've never written a line of programming before, right? Like you, so I said, yeah, sure, I can do that, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and then it forced me to be up all night learning all that stuff. And I, and I think even though now I'm not into coding anymore and I still, I mean, I still do it like on the side and I still like things, but I'm, I've decided with no to be my job, I'm still really glad I did it. Um, because, uh, and I totally went off, off track. So your question, when they came to me and said, can you do these commercials? Um, I knew that I, I physically could do them. Um, could I do them to their specifications that they were used to from these big hundreds of thousands of dollar, uh, you know, companies in, in, in Philly that charge that much for a commercial? Could I do something that was up to their standards? I believed I could, and I said, yeah, like, let's do it. <laughs> and, oh, you need it in two weeks? Cool, you know, let's do it. And what ended up happening was they, I, I had to be humble with the people that I hired. And I, I'm a big, big proponent of getting help where you need it. Um, finding the people who know what they're talking about and asking. And for me, those were actually my employees on this shoot. So I hired a whole crew, like a 20-member crew. A lot of them had experience on other larger things. I had done, don't get me wrong, I'm not like a spring chicken. I had done a lot of film before, but I had never done something at this kind of this, this standardized level where everything is expected to be a certain way and lunch is at 12 o'clock and it's catered and there's these things available all the time and there's two grips and you don't touch anything without their permission that's in their department and then other people. And so I learned from these guys. I, I went up to each of them. I'm like, I'm the boss here. I wrote the thing. I'm director. But you know way the hell more than I do about all this stuff. So can you, and I, each of the people, if I wanted to know something, I took them aside and I said, you know, hey, how am I supposed to direct you? <laughs> you know, how am I supposed to deal with you? And then they, were, then they uh, kindly alerted me that, uh, oh, you should have an assistant director. It's sort of like the second most important position on set. And I had, I had, knew, I had known what assistant directors were, but I had no idea how important they were until I was on this shoot. And so for the second uh, two days of the shoot, the first two days I was without one. For the second part of the shoot, I had an assistant director. 
and like, oh my God, this was so nice. I thought that I had to do that job. That's actually someone else's job. You know, the things you learn when you like go ask people. And that, I learned that from my second assistant camera. My, my camera assistant, second camera assistant. He, I, I open up to him and say, what do I need to know? What am I doing wrong? And he said, you need an assistant director, dude. He's like, this is ridiculous. You're like, you're telling us what to do. You should be telling the actors what to do all the time and not us, you know. So the assistant director directs the crew, just by the way, for anybody who's, you know. And they also are the ones who make the famous call outs of, you know, uh, roll camera, roll sound, you know, market. And then the, direct, the director usually gets to say action. So does that answer your question? I do, I do believe in like taking on things. If you, if you believe that you're not coming from nowhere, you know, you're coming from somewhere, and somebody gives you a job that's a little too big for you, say you can do it and then find help if you can't do it. Even if you lost money on the job, it would be worth it because you're going to learn, you know. And to me, that's, that's what having a business in, like this is all about for me because my end game is not to have 50 employees as a, as a, a client services company. That's not where I'm trying to go. My end game is to have a company maybe that's running on its own and I'm like writing and working on films and, you know, maybe even sell the company at that point. That, that's where I want to go. You know, and if I just let you in on like my pipe dream, but that's where I would, I would like to get to a place where I'm just working on creative work that I want to work on. And this is totally cool in the meantime. So it's, it is odd what happened with this agency. They came to me and they asked for concepts. Usually the agency is the one who comes up with the concepts, and then they hire us to do it. But this agency is sort of forward thinking, and they said, hey, uh, we're not involved with film every day, so we want you at the table when we do these. And it just so happened that my concepts that I came up with at the table were the ones that were bought by the state. Um, there were other concepts presented, right? Um, so. I don't, just for, for the record, like if somebody wants to film an event or a wedding or anything like that, I, I don't do anything like that. I will only do things that have a concept behind them where someone's written it. And usually it has to be us. But if there's someone thoughtful on the other end who has a great idea, of course we're open to it. We just don't like to come to the table where somebody says, we want you to film our CEO talking about our new warehouse. And then once he's done talking about the warehouse, we want to show the warehouse. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, cool. Just have somebody else do that because that's not that's not what we want to do.